Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Divine Conversations and welcome to this collective general love reading. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So today, as in the day that I'm recording this, it is a Friday. And so because of that, that means it is Venus Day. So happy Venus Day to you all. Whether you're watching this on Friday or on a Friday or not, it does not matter. Happy Venus Day to you. But um, today I was inspired um, by Spirit to do a collective, well, the inspiration started out as wanting to do, like feeling like doing a collective love reading. Um, because today is Friday and it's Venus Day, but that was, that was something that Spirit put on my heart today. So I'm gonna do that. Um, with that said, sidebar, I do have a love channel. It's a second channel that is all about love and interpersonal relationships. It's called Mystic Unicorn Tarot. If you're unfamiliar with that, check the link in the description box below where you can go straight to that channel. There are a ton of love messages on that channel that are all timeless. So I would recommend, especially if you're new to the channel, I would recommend checking out the playlists, seeing whichever way, whichever direction you wanna go, whether it's for a sign, specific sign or the collective or something like that, and pay attention to the titles of the readings because that's going to give you insight as to what is probably going to resonate with you or what which um, video has a message for you, okay? Um, so Spirit, inspired me today on this Venus day to do a collective love reading. But then as I was working through the feeling of what spirit was inspiring within me, it also just started to feel like, I, I started to wanna just call it a Venus reading because we could be talking about love. We could also be talking about money, um, uh, finances, um, or your values. Venus does rule energies of love and values and your relationship to money and abundance and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so this, I, I kind of just wanna call this a big old general Venus reading, but I do feel like we're gonna be talking about love mostly. I'm gonna start with the Romance Angels deck and then we're gonna get into some tarot. Uh, but with that said, it's interesting that I was inspired to do this today because um, side note, I do, I practice astrology here on Divine Conversations, but we look at astrology from the true sidereal point of view. Yes, many of you know that. If you've been following me, you know that. But if you're new to the channel, I don't follow tropical or Western or mainstream astrology. I work with true sidereal astrology. And in terms of that, Venus right now is in fact in one of her home signs of Taurus. Okay, that's, you know, and depending on when you actually come across this reading, um, she may not still be in Taurus, but as of the moment that this reading is channeled, she is in the constellation of Taurus, okay? So this is one of her home signs. Um, and so that's kind of why as I was channeling <clears throat> this message from Venus, it was turning into more than just love. It's also turning into like a reading about your values and maybe your relationship to your finances or abundance and yes, relationships and love and, and all that stuff. But really the stuff that you hold value in, okay? Especially with Venus being in Taurus. Taurus being the ruler of the second house, that being the house of your values and personal finances, all right? So let's get into this reading here, this Venus reading, but also really a collective love reading and see what messages we have for the collective. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Last shuffle, all right. Let's see, what's going on here for my collective? Venus, what messages do you have for the collective at this time? Oh my God, you guys, this is so crazy. <laughs> the first card out is let go of control issues. And I was sitting here, that was what I was feeling was gonna come through for the collect. Well, well uh, maybe if you would, would you mind? Are you gonna, are you, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Let go of control issues. That's literally the first thing that I felt in my mind. I kid you not. I didn't say it, but as soon as we started to get into the reading and I was about to pull cards, I was feeling through the energy and let go of control issues popped up in my head. All right. Um, so this definitely could have to do with anything within the realm of Venus, whether this is money and finances or whether this is love and interpersonal relationships, okay? What else? Anything else for the collective here? in terms of let go of control issues 
or this, this reading and then make the effort. Okay. All right. I'm being told not to take what's at the bottom of the deck. Um, although, okay. Well, they're saying not to take it, but okay. So let go of control issues and make the effort. It seems that what the collect, the message that Venus has for the collective right now is you're running up against an issue, whether this is for love or money and finances. You seem to be running up against the issue of um, not wanting to make any sort of effort if you don't have control over the situation, ultimately 100% control over the situation. There is a bit of a defeatist energy involved with this right now, guys, uh, collectively, for whomever this is resonating for. Um, and the, the, the fact of the matter is, the, all that you can really control in terms of love, in terms of a relationship with a certain person, in terms of finding that ideal relationship or finding a partner, a, a partner, a partner or mate at all, um, or maybe even in terms of uh, money and finances and career and all that kind of stuff. The only thing you really have control over in those circumstances is your own involvement, is the effort that you make. And I feel like somebody here feels defeated in terms of the efforts that they may have made in the past that didn't work out in the way that they wanted to, the way that they wanted them to, because of elements that were outside of their control. And I feel like somebody here is in this energy of, well, why, why should I even try if I'm not going to receive the results that I want? That is a tough paradigm to be within. Because all that I can really say to you in terms of that is most likely, however it was that you were trying to work to get something to work, wasn't the right moment for you, wasn't the right timing for you, or maybe it wasn't the right modality for you, or maybe it just wasn't the right person or the right circumstance or the right situation. Maybe it, you know, like, Ultimately, you don't have control over that. And the main message here that Venus wants to bring forward towards you is if you stop trying, then you will never, you have zero chances of ever receiving exactly what it is that you want. Just because it didn't work out the way that you wanted it to or the way that you expected it to or with the person that you wanted it to or expected it to or in the type of business or in the time frame of that business or whatnot, whatever with that you wanted it to doesn't mean it's never going to happen. But if you don't try at all, if you stop making the effort altogether and sink into a level of feeling defeated here, then it's never going to happen. Okay, I mean, like, if you don't try at all, then your chances are 100% zero. <laughs> it's never going to happen. So don't, don't let this stop you. You know what? I want to get one more card. Can we get one more card for the collective, please, in terms of this reading, in terms of this Venus message here? Healing family issues. Okay. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. That's interesting. Healing family issues. How is this involved with this situation? Some, okay, so then some of this has to do with your childhood. Um, some of this has to do with what it is you learned as a child growing up. Um, lack of abundance or your issues surrounding abundance growing up. Some of you learn from your parents, from your family, or just as an early child or whatnot, whatever, as you were growing. Um, some of you learned some very controlling aspects. Some of you had, somebody here may have had very domineering parents, which effectively taught you to be extremely domineering with individuals and circumstances surrounding you interpersonally, whether that's romantically or platonically or career-wise. And you're in a, a, a period in your life right now where the universe is trying to deconstruct that belief for you, or at least to help you deconstruct that belief. 
But if you don't, but see the problem here is regardless as to whatever the specifics of this situation are, regardless as to whatever family issues you need to heal in terms of this, somebody here feels like if they don't have the utmost control over the situation, then they don't want to be involved at all. Now, this very, it could very well be that you experienced something in your early childhood or growing up in which you had zero control over the circumstance and it was wildly chaotic. So this is kind of a defense mechanism for somebody here in not wanting to make any sort of effort if they don't have 100% the utmost control. And I mean like is the boss is pulling all the strings here, like is the only person that has any sort of insight. You might be the type of person that's very much, if you can't get it, if, if, if you want something done right, you might as well do it yourself. And sometimes that does work for you or that sometimes that is something good to lean on, especially if you've been doing something over and over and over again, trying to get others to help you and it's just not working out and you finally decide, you know what, let me just do it myself and it, you, it ends up working out for you, okay. But this can be a negative thing here in terms of never allowing anyone in to help. And so in terms of that, make the effort here is saying, make the effort to work on letting go of these control issues. Make the effort to heal these family issues that have led you to potentially led you to being so completely controlling. The only thing you really truly have control over is your own self and the effort that you make. And at the end of the day, you guys, if you can go home and say, you know what, regardless as to how this situation turned out, I am happy with myself and the effort that I made here. I am happy with how I contributed to this situation. I know I did my best in this situation. I may have made some mistakes here or there, but I'm learning from it. But I, at the end of the day, I'm proud of myself and the effort that I made in this situation. That's really all you have. That's really all you can hope for. That's really all you can aspire to in terms in situations like this because you have no control over someone else's involvement. You can't make someone do something that they're unwilling to do, they're unable unable to do, they don't know how to do, they're not familiar like you can't you can't force someone else to make to do something and expect that to be a healthy relationship. You can't but then you also miss out you lose out if you decide well you know what because of that i'm not i'm just not going to try at all then you are the one who are make or you are ensuring yourself that you don't get anywhere that you don't achieve you yourself are sealing your own grave there by not even trying okay all right okay i and, and see This energy that I'm getting from Venus is very understanding of your plight here. For whomever is resonating with this reading, it's not like Venus is or these energies from Venus are coming through saying we are insensitive to or we don't understand why you would even feel this way. Just make the effort. No, they have complete understanding of what it is you've been through that has led you to this point of being in these controlling energies. Okay of these dominating, domineering energies of needing to be in such control. But the message here is you are actually doing more damage to yourself. You are sabotaging yourself more and most, the most, by refusing to be involved at all or refusing to make any sort of effort towards achieving what it is you wish to achieve, whether that's in money and finances and career or with your relationship with money and or in terms of love, okay? Last shuffle here. And then I wanna get into some tarot. Let's get into some tarot about this, yes? For this collective reading. For this collective Venus reading. And love reading. I don't know what to call this, guys. A love reading or a Venus reading. I think I just wanna call it a Venus reading. Moving forward. And this is for a collective reading. This is for all signs here, okay? This is just energies, messages channeled from the realm of Venus. Yes, uh, what's going on in this, in this situation, please, Spirit? Uh, 
Good God, all of these swords here. You have the Page of Cups, you have the Eight of Swords, the Queen of Swords, the Three of Wands, the Three of Swords. One last card, please. Just to round this out. One last card to tell this story. Okay, well we have... <laughs> okay, and so I asked for one last card to round out the story and they give me three. All right. Queen of Pentacles, the Lovers, and the Star. This is all about making the effort, you guys. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Queen of Wands. All right. Oh, come now. Why did, I don't understand why my camera does this, but there we go. Okay, the Queen of Wands is your overall energy here. And focus, please, thank you. All right. So, telling this story. There are things that you dream of page of cups, but you find yourself blocked, locked away, unable to go forward towards those things, a perceiving of nothing but obstacles, obstacles, obstacles in your way. Page of cups, eight of swords. You feel like you're tied. You feel like your hands are tied. You feel like you, no matter what you do, no matter what effort you make, no matter what direction you go in, no matter what it is you try, you just can't seem to get anywhere. The Queen of Swords comes forward to you and says, honey, honey, I, I hate to break it to you, but that's just not the case. Queen of Swords. Okay, the Queen of Swords is either representing needing to remove... For some of you, maybe this is um, re-identify your goals change your goals, remove some certain goals or certain mindsets or certain requirements altogether because maybe that's what's hindering you. Maybe that's what's getting in your way. You're requiring things to show up in a certain way or you're requiring, requiring a person to show up in a certain way romantically or you're requiring the universe to deliver this money, abundance, finance, career, whatnot, whatever, these possessions to you in a certain way. And that's what's binding you here because you are closing yourself off to the true nature of abundance. The universe has is not in the business of denying you of what it is that you want, but it's not going to bring it to you in the ways that you demand. It's going to bring it to you in the best ways for you. And that often is in ways that you may not even expect, let alone think of. But for some of you here, the way that the universe is trying to bring your manifestations or what it is you dream towards you are in ways that you're saying, no, I don't want that. Well, why don't you want that? That's where the Queen of Swords energy is coming in for some of you. It's like, well, wait, this is what you're asking for. But now that it's coming to you, because it's coming to you in a certain way, you don't want it. Why don't you want it? What is your, uh, what is your problem with the way that this is coming to you or the way that this is trying to be delivered to you? That right there could be your hindrance. That, you see, do you see how someone is let go of control issues? The next cards you have, the next two cards you have here are the Three of Wands and the Three of Swords. And what this is saying to me here is you are, or some, whomever this re reading is for, you are focused on achieving your goals, Three of Wands, through the specific lens of how you've been hurt or the heartbreak you've experienced in the past, Three of Swords. The main thing that I'm feeling with this, you guys, is that you are somebody whoever is resonating with this reading or whomever this message is for it's your heartbreak your pain from the past that is dictating your movement forward or the momentum that you put in or how you receive what it is you're looking for either it's it's hindering you altogether, like it's literally blocking you from receiving that which you've been working towards, Three of Wands. The so Three of Wands is all about momentum and it's also about um, uh, receipt, like your, your, your ships coming in, right? Either this Three of Swords energy, this heartbreak is completely blocking this port for these ships to come in, or you are requiring Here's that control energy again. You are requiring your ships to come in in a certain way that is directly related to what it is you've experienced in terms of heartbreak from the past. 
Now, this is kind of tricky though, you guys, because I understand you putting up boundaries because of the pain and the circumstances that you've ex had and experienced in the past. But this doesn't feel like you or somebody making, um, ed uh, not educated guesses, but um, educated decisions, right? Reshaping your life or, or yourself um, in terms of in relation to the heartbreak in your past so that you know you've learned and you've grown from the situation and you're a better person because of it and now you make certain adjustments so that you don't experience the pain from the past. This feels like the exact opposite. This feels like you've taken what it is that you've experienced, the heartbreak that you've experienced from the past and now whatever that is new that's coming through for you has to pass through that first. Instead of having to pass through healthy boundaries or wisdom gained from past circumstances, you're literally requiring what it is you want to come forward towards you to pass through this window of the pain that you've experienced. I hope this makes sense to you. It's like instead of you creating a new doorway or a healthy boundary, you're allowing this pain to create the boundary for you. And that's effectively controlling overly controlling or putting overly controlling requirements on how things come to you and that's effectively negating anything that the universe has to bring to you at this time okay now ultimately what venus is saying or what the energies of venus are saying in this message for this person is this is all about your self-worth this boils down to your self-worth because what we have here next is the queen of pentacles, the lovers, and the star. I'm sorry for the sniffles, you guys. I know the microphone that I have now picks, it, picks up on it pretty, pretty loudly, but um, me channeling like this and talking through like this, it, I get clogged up. So I'm sorry. Let, let, let me do something about that. Hold on. <laughs> and the really ironic thing about this whole like sniffling situation is that it's not even it's not even far enough for me to like blow my nose and it for it to come out it's like in the back it's like in the back of my throat so I just kind of have to like suck it back there I'm sorry that's really gross <laughs> all right um this is really this really boils down to your self-worth okay because uh, queen of pentacles energy because what i'm feeling from this is you have such controlling energies going on or such control issues going on because you don't necessarily f feel worthy of receiving this somehow what this is saying here queen of pentacles the lovers and the star the lovers is representing a choice okay and the Queen of Pentacles is coming to you saying, if you are, you are worthy enough, but you have to choose, if you, you have to choose to recognize that you're worthy enough for you to even put the effort in for yourself. Okay. You still, the Queen of Pentacles is saying to you in terms of what it is that you dream of, the star, you still have to put in some effort of your own. You still have to try to get the ball rolling for yourself. And if we're talking about love and interpersonal relations, like a love situation for you, if this is resonating on, as a love reading for you, you have to feel worthy enough. You have to know you're worthy enough to put yourself out there and to do the things you need to do so that you can line up and re line up with and receive that which you're asking for. But the Queen of Pentacles is a hard worker. Okay, she's not somebody that just sits back and just expects everything to be delivered to her without she having to do something for it too. That would be Queen of Pentacles reversed, okay? The Queen of Pentacles upright is all about reciprocity. She knows, she recognizes that she's gonna have to put some work and effort into it too, but also that it has to be a balance give and take. There has to be equal reciprocity here. Just like she's putting her attention and time and effort into it, the other person or the other people involved need to do their part as well. But the Queen of Pentacles is saying to you here, if you're worthy enough or you, you are worthy enough, but you have to be willing to put your own effort into it too. You have to choose 
the lovers. You have to choose to put your own effort into it too and work towards what it is your goal, your goals are, the star. But the star is also saying to you here, it's not for you to know how it's going to come to you. You just got to keep moving forward towards it and it will come to you eventually. But you've got to follow that guidance system. You've got to follow your intuition. You've got to follow the hits, the intuitive hits that you're getting. You've got to get up and start taking some action. Overall energy is the queen of wands. And really what I'm, what I'm reading for the queen of wands right now is um, confidence. You've got to believe in yourself, okay? You've got to believe that what it is you truly want and desire will come to you should you make the proper effort, proper effort, should you let go of the control issues. The Queen of Wands is receptive, just like the Queen of Pentacles. But the Queen of Pentacles is more practical, okay? Is, very, is an earth sign, is an earth energy. So there's practicality involved. So there are physical steps you're going to have to take to receive what it is that you have to receive. That's what the queen of pentacles represents. The queen of wands represents that pure fire, spiritual, creative, receptive energy of holding the vibration of what it is that you truly want and allowing yourself to sit back and allow it to come to you. But the work involved with the queen of wands is holding that vibration and holding the belief in yourself that you are eligible to receive it, but you also, what I'm hearing specifically, is you also have to be willing to receive it. You can't hold that vibration and not be willing to receive it and expect it to come to you, okay? But really what the Queen of Wands says here is believe in yourself. You are capable of receiving what it is you want and or need. You are, you are worthy of receiving what it is you want and or need, but you have got to let go of the way that it comes to you. You have got to let go of these control issues because that is what's stopping you. That is what's hindering the process, spirit or Venus spirit is saying. Okay. Do we want to clarify anything? Yes. Oh God, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, yes, let's clarify the Eight of Swords, Golden Art Nouveau or Golden Universal Art Nouveau. Okay, let's clarify this, some energies here for the collective, yeah? For this Venus reading, collective love reading. All right, um, closing messages. I just heard closing messages. I thought we were gonna clarify some things. I, you're, con you're confusing me, you guys. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm having an, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Closing messages first, that doesn't make any sense. I wanna clarify some things. Let's clarify some things first, but I'm going to use, okay, I'm sorry, you guys, I'm all over the place. My guides are all over the place. We're going to use a different deck, though. We're going to use this deck, but that's going to give us our closing message. I want to clarify, I at least want to clarify this Eight of Swords first. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Clarification. Clarification. Last shuffle, I want to talk about this Eight of Swords energy here for you, okay? Clarify the Eight of Swords for this collective love reading. Clarify the Eight of Swords here. What are the elements? What are the energies of this Eight of Swords? First card we have is the Hanged Man. Oh, yeah. All right. Then we have the Fool in Reverse. Clarify the Eight of Swords. Anything else for the Eight of Swords? Yes, the Knight of Cups. Overall energy is the moon. Okay, so illusion is stopping you here. All right, fear actually also is definitely stopping you here. Okay, so this Eight of Swords energy right here is clarified by the Hanged Man, the Fool in Reverse, and the Knight of Cups. So you're, you have to take a leap of faith. 
You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your own manifestational abilities. You have to believe in your heart. Um, you have to move forward with how your heart is guiding you to. You're not going to be able to take this leap of faith or receive, start this new cycle. I feel like the fool here is representing starting this new cycle that is free of these control issues. But what the higher, I'm sorry, the hanged man is representing here for you is you needing to recognize how your controlling aspects or the, the need to control in this way is circumventing your, your, your efforts, is stopping you from receiving, is stopping you from taking this leap of faith or starting this new cycle that your heart is calling for, whether this be business and or finances or whether this be in terms of love and romance. Okay, what I'm seeing in this hanged man energy is like these controlling issues, these control issues are holding you in this space, are keeping you stuck and stagnant until you finally realize you can't control everything around you. The only thing you have control over is your effort, the effort that you make in the situation. There are going to be situations in which you put effort into it and either the other person doesn't and it fails or you both put effort into it and it still fails. So what? At least you tried. It's not the end of the world. But again, when you stop trying all together to, to, to circumvent that to, so, well, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to deal with the effects of something failing and my, my efforts seemingly going nowhere. So I'm just not going to put any effort into it at all. Then you will absolutely lose 100% of the time. That is the one and only way to guarantee that you never get what it is you want by not even trying at all. Okay. Okay. Uh, Spirit really wants me to get to these closing messages. Okay, but I actually, I, I want to clarify. The last thing that I want to clarify is I want to see what the Queen of Pentacles has to say in terms of this situation. Let's clarify the Queen of Pentacles, please. What messages does the Queen of Pentacles have for the collective? The King of Wands now. Look at this. Look at this. You have the King. This is the first actual King to show up here. We've had nothing but Queens. Queen of Swords, Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Wands. Now we have the King of Wands. Go, go ahead, Queen of Pentacles. What do you have to say about this? What do you want to say to the collective in terms of this energy right now? Okay, King of Wands with the Five of Wands. And the overall energy is the Ten of Wands. Whoa. All right. All right, all right, all right. So the Ten of Wands here is representing being burdened, carrying excessive baggage. Okay, that you need to let go of, that you need to release because holding on to this baggage is going to do nothing but weigh you down. It's going to nothing but continue to stop you from going anywhere, from achieving anything, okay? You have to let this go. How do you let this go? Well, you take on a bit of the King of Wands energy here. King of Wands with the Five of Wands. And this is actually kind of perfect because the Five of Wands is all about differing of opinion and needing to find a resolution, needing to work things out between you and others, you and you and someone else, or internally, right? The Five of Wands can also represent internal conflict. But also the Five of Wands represents an opinion-based reality or an opinion-based circumstance or situation. Enter the King of Wands. The King of Wands doesn't give a damn what other people's opinions are. He knows what he wants and he's gonna sit back like his queen, but he's gonna sit back and wait for the right time to strike. He's gonna sit back and wait for that doorway or window of opportunity to open up where th at that moment he's gonna be up in a flash and he's gonna be taking action towards what it is he wants, regardless as to what other people have to say about it. So for you guys here, for whomever is resonating with this, the Queen of Pentacles is saying to you, forget the internal monologue. Forget the internal unrest and just fucking go for it. If it's something that you want, take the action steps you need to take. Don't worry about the, in, like, don't, like literally, I, I, it's, I kind of want to say, you need to just ignore all of the reasons why you shouldn't or why you can't. 
or why you decided that you're not going to. That's what the five of wands represents here. All of the reasons, all of the reasons why you don't want to make the effort, which is connected to all the baggage that you are carrying. Ten of wands, overall energy. So what? Like, honestly, what I'm feeling for this energy right now, you guys, is that at this point, it's not even trying, it's not even worth trying to untangle this energy. Like, you, you have, like I'm seeing like a ball of yarn or a ball of string or like a, a necklace chain or something like that that's gotten so knotted up that it, trying to un, like you, you're better off just tossing it away, just getting rid of it, letting it go instead of working to untangle this thing because it's just like, it's such a tangled mess that it's next to impossible, damn near impossible to unravel it. So fuck it. Don't even worry about it. Don't even pay attention to it. Instead, just start taking action towards what it is you want to take. This king of wands here, or what it is you want to achieve, achieve excuse me. This king of wands here represents making that effort. Okay, since that seems to be a central theme here, let's clarify, I wanna clarify make the effort a little bit and then we'll get into the closing messages here. So make the effort, clarify make the effort here, please spirit. What do you wanna say about actually making this effort? 10 of swords, four of pentacles, one last card. Oop, two last cards. Okay, oh, well would you look at that. The 10 of cups and the devil. Overall energy is the Six of Swords. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, indeed. Okay, so in terms of making the effort here. Yeah, I really don't... That Ten of Pen... I'm sorry, that Ten of Cups came out... Did I say Ten of Pentacles? I'm sorry, Ten of Cups. That Ten of Cups came out. It. I mean, it, it applies. In the overall grand scheme of things, it applies because the Ten of Cups is what you're working towards, what you ultimately want to achieve. Your ultimate emotional wish fulfillment, okay? Whether that be love, whether that be possessions, money and finances, a having a family, like what, whatever. Whatever is in this realm of Venus that we're talking about here that you seem to have a problem with, this is ultimately what you're going for. But the message here in terms of make the effort here, Ten of Swords, Four of Pentacles, and the Devil. You have got to recognize, you've got to recognize that you are the one holding yourself in this position with all of these controlling energies, these control issues. The devil has got you in its grasp. But the devil can only keep you in its grasp as long as you allow yourself to stay there. You can always be released from the devil should you choose to no longer give your power to the devil by holding on to whatever it is you're holding on to, four of pentacles. You've got to bring that to an end, ten of swords. Because ultimately, with that Ten of Swords energy, ultimately, you are hurting yourself in the end. No one else has any responsibility in terms of this if you are choosing not to even try. That is your choice and your choice alone, and you are the only person that is stopping you from getting what it is that you want when you don't even allow yourself to try. Six of Swords is your overall energy. This is where you're trying to go. You're to, in terms of making the effort, moving from rough waters to calmer waters. Six of Swords, move forward from this. Let go of these control issues, okay? All right, final closing message is coming from the... Any more shuffles? No, sufficient. All right, closing message, please. Spirit, what is this closing message that you have for the collective? Wow, one card and one card only, and it just so happens to be the Five of Cups. This is gonna sting you guys. You wanna know why? 
because the, the universe is literally saying to you, you are crying over spilled milk. You are crying, I mean like not to trivialize some of the things that you may have gone through in your life, but spirit's kind of saying right now, you're crying over nothing. And no, okay, we understand it's not really nothing. We understand that a lot of these things really hurt you. But the way that you're going about this, you are focused more on the sorrow, we'll call it that, the sorrowful aspects of this, rather than what still stands. There are three cups spilled out here, but there are still two cups standing behind this person. You are crying over spilled milk. And I don't mean that in an offensive way, but like reality check, like let's keep it real, you guys. The more that you stop yourself from making the effort, the more that you hold these extreme control issues, the more you are expressing this energy of crying over spilled milk or overly, I wanna say obsessed with the end results from the past. You will not receive what you want 100% of the time when you don't even try. At the bottom of the deck here, mic drop, king of wands. There you go. You just have to try. You just have to keep going. You know, the other element of the king of wands that's relevant to this situation here is the fact that regardless as to what seems to have happened in the past or what seems even to be happening right now in terms of the situation. Let's say he's trying to, you're trying to create something and right now it doesn't look like it's going so well. That doesn't matter to the King of Wands. Look at this. You have the King and the Queen of Wands right there. But that doesn't matter to the King of Wands because he knows what it is he's looking for. He knows what it is that he's going after. He, just like the Queen, has the utmost confidence in himself. Regardless as to whatever havoc or chaos or whatnot, whatever is going on around him in terms of this circumstance, that will never kill his drive to get what it is that he wants, to go after what it is that he wants. He's just going to adjust his, his way forward or adjust his process accordingly, but it's always going to be in alignment with what it is he wants or what it is the Queen of Wands represents. In, in, and the Queen of Wands represents your alignment being an, an energetic or vibrational match to that which you desire to receive in your life. That's the Queen of Wands side of it. The King of Wands side of it is saying, all right, I know where it is we're going. I know where it is we're want, what we want. I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to watch. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and I'm going to keep watching. And I'm like, oop opportunity. Bam. I'm going to take a step right there. I'm going to make an action right there. I'm going to make a move right there. Awesome. Okay. That piece of the puzzle is in the process. That piece of the puzzle is set. Okay. I'm going to wait. I'm going to watch. I'm going to wait. Window of opportunity. Bam. I'm going to make my next move. Regardless as to the chaos that's surrounding him, regardless as to how things look on the surface right now, he is not going to stop making his moves until he receives what he wants. I don't know if you guys can hear the music passing by, but it sounds like Bad Bunny. Yeah, that sounds like Bad Bunny. Anyway, that was a little musical interlude for you, but he is not going to stop. You miss 100% of the opportunities that you don't even go for 100% of the time, okay? Closing Oracle Guidance um, is going to come, uh, it's going to come from Old Faithful, our trusty Crystal Mandala Oracle. That's what I feel called to at this moment. So let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Last Shuffle. Ooh, wow. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it because it is so perfect with this energy, this fiery energy of the king and the queen of wands here. What is our or closing oracle guidance? Card number 39, goddess Sekhmet and fire agate. I definitely just saw 4444 on the counter. 
passion of the lion heart. I mean, you can, uh, couldn't be any more perfect, but this is why Spirit wanted me to use this deck because that is the card that they wanted us to see in terms of this reading. Oops, 39. Okay, here you go. We bring you the empowerment of passion of the lion heart. Through passion, you will dedicate yourself with an intensity and discipline that may surprise you. Passion is love activated. It is energy that moves you from within and empowers you to act in the world in ways you would not otherwise dare to even consider. Passion gives you strength. You would not otherwise, I'm sorry, passion gives you strength, plugs you into the eternal energy of sacred fire and generates the ability to accomplish tasks you once may have not believed possible. Huh, look at that. With great passion, there can be great pain. The heart that loves wild and open is also the heart that can feel disappointed and doubt most keenly. The empowerment of the lion heart strengthens your heart to recover from any pain through the power of courage, commitment, and bold, loving devotion to what matters most to you. Oh my God, that's perfect. Excellent. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really, truly hope this was helpful for you. I am sending you all so much love. I hope you have a fantastic day. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined and you haven't done so already. But with that said, you guys, I'm sending you love. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Fantastic. Bye.